Okay, so I thought I could make uh, one more video uh, talking about uncouplers and electron transport chain inhibitors and ATP synthase inhibitors and how they all work together. Um, just because it's, uh, it's a concept that comes up and um, I think it, it's really useful to go over really briefly. But uh, just to, again, re-summarize, again, we, we, we talked about in like that first introduction video about chemiosmotic theory. Uh, Dr. Mitchell came up with the idea that the electron transport chain and ATP synthase are connected together by this pH gradient. And if I'm gonna just draw this out, so let me just draw, draw it out a little bit. So we're, the electron transport chain, as we're oxidizing the substrates of NADH or succinate through succinate dehydrogenase, what we're doing is we're gonna be pumping protons from the matrix into the IMS as we transfer those electrons between the complexes it'll power the pumping of protons against the concentration gradient to the IMS. And ATP synthase then uses that uh, proton gradient to then power ATP synthase uh, so that you basically convert uh, this electrochemical gradient into mechanical energy, then chemical energy in the form of ATP. And uh, so if you didn't have the electron transport chain functioning, you wouldn't have ATP synthase functioning because you wouldn't have that proton gradient. And then we also came with that second conclusion if we go back over here, wherever it was. We, so we basically said, so this was the, the idea here, the electron transport chain produces the pH gradient that ATP synthase requires to function. But we also said the other thing that ATP synthase dissipates that proton gradient, allowing the ETC to continue to function. And the way that we said that this worked was, if I go all the way down, that if ATP synthase didn't function, we would no longer dissipate that proton gradient, and then we get a huge, huge buildup of protons, and eventually it will become unfavorable to continue to pump protons from the matrix into the IMS, and then you would shut down the electron transport chain, and that would be that. So that's what we got from that first video. Now, um, there's, let's just get right into it. So we, we, we have this thing called an uncoupler, okay? And the way that I like to remember it is that, remember, we just said that the electron transport chain and the, ET, the ETC and ATP synthase are coupled. So what an uncoupler does is it uncouples the electron transport chain from ATP synthase. And now how does this do this? Well, let's think about it. So an uncoupler, what it's physically doing is it's physically putting little pores within, it's putting, physically putting little pores within the inner membrane, okay? Putting these little pores within the inner membrane so that as soon as the electron transport chain pumps those protons from the matrix into the IMS, these protons immediately come back through these little pores they come immediately back through these little pores back into the mitochondrial matrix. Now, the thing is, well, let's think about what the effects of this are. Well, the electron transport chain, does it care that there are no more protons into the IMS? Well, technically it doesn't because, or technically it does because the idea here is that, okay, it pumps the protons into the IMS and we said that there was a delta G associated with this transfer because we're basically, as we're pumping the protons from the matrix to the IMS, we're decreasing the entropy, which is unfavorable. And um, the idea here though, is that if we, if we put the uncoupler in, um, what it's effectively doing is it's equalizing the concentration gradients, right? It's equalizing the concentration gradient. So there's not even an, a concentration gradient. So what's happening is that let, there's, no, there's no longer gonna be a lower pH on one side versus a higher proton gradient on, on one side. So if I, if I was gonna redraw this, and maybe I should use a stroke eraser. So if I was gonna redraw this, what, I would, what would happen in the case of an uncoupler is that you're gonna have similar pHs on both sides of the matrix and the IMS, or both sides of the inner membrane. So there's no longer gonna be a concentration gradient. So if you're gonna have like 10 protons on one side, you're gonna have the same amount of protons on the other side. And what this does for the electron transport chain is that it actually makes it super favorable for the electron transport chain to continue to function because remember, the electron transport chain used to be held back by the, by the proton gradients and in that it would have to wait for ATP synthase to dissipate that proton gradient 
so that it could continue to function at a specific rate. But now that there's literally nothing holding it back, there's, you basically can think of it that now there's an, a, an abundance of protons on both sides of the matrix. And as soon as it pumps one proton it, onto the IMS side, that proton is going to come directly back onto the matrix side through these little pores that uh, the uncoupler puts in the inner membrane. So there's no gradient that's holding back the mitochondria, that's holding back the electron transport chain. So the electron transport chain is going to fly through this electron transport chain. It's going to fly through the cycle and it's going to go through it even faster now. Um, and if you go back to your uh, worksheet for uh, this week, you're actually going to see that the slope after you add in the uncoupler is actually much steeper after you add the, or not much, but like a little bit steeper after you add the uncoupler. And this is the reason why, because now there's literally not, you, the electron transport chain doesn't have to wait for ATP synthase to dissipate that proton gradient. The uncoupler is already dissipating that proton gradient and there's nothing holding it back. So it's going to, the electron transport chain in the case of an uncoupler will function at its maximal rate. Now, okay, so we're going to say that, okay, in the case of an uncoupler, the ETC continues to function. at max rate so long as it continues to have its substrates. And by substrates, again, I mean like, as long as it has like those electron carriers or NADH or succinate, and actually also oxygen, because if we didn't have a terminal electron acceptor, these electrons would kind of get backed up as they're being passed through the complexes and the electron transport chain would also shut down. So we, we need all of our substrates in order for the electron transport chain to function. And if we do, in the case of an uncoupler, it's going to function at a maximal rate. Now, what happens, do, what do you guys think would happen to the, what happened to ATP synthase? Well, if we look at ATP synthase, we remember we said that ATP synthase requires a, a proton gradient or an electrochemical gradient in order for it to function. Are we creating enough of a proton gradient in this case so that ATP synthase can continue to function? Well, if you look over here, well, what we just said is happening is that as soon as these protons are being pumped from the matrix into the IMS by the ETC, they're immediately diffusing back through the membrane because we punched holes in them. And it's basically coming directly back into the matrix. So we're not really creating a proton gradient. Anymore. And because we, don't, we no longer have a proton gradient, ATP synthase, ATP synthase no longer has that electrochemical gradient and it can no longer function. So ATP synthase function halts with no, or not with, but as a result, as a result of no H plus gradient. Okay, so the key idea here is that in the case of an uncoupler, you're going to punch holes in the membrane. Because you're punching holes in the membrane, you're no longer going to have a proton gradient um, because any protons that the ETC pumps, they're going to just freely diffuse back into the matrix because remember, everything tends to disorder and you want to basically have any, any order that you would make with the ETC, it's going to basically be disrupted because there's going to be holes or your, your membrane is not going to be intact. So that means that because you don't have that H plus gradient, ATP synthase will no longer function. Um, and then for the ETC itself, because now it, ETC is not going to be held back by anything, um, and it's going to continue to function as long as you have your substrates. Um, and, it's, and the idea here is that um, because the uncoupler is dissipating that proton gradient for the ETC and it doesn't, no longer relies on ATP synthase, you've un effectively uncoupled the ETC, ETC from ATP synthase and increase the activity of electron transport chain and halt the activity of ATP and synthase. Okay, now let's go to the case of, let's just say, so we can also do an ETC inhibitor. And let's see what the effects of that are. Well, the, if we put it an electron transport chain inhibitor, I think it's important to uh, talk about what we're actually inhibiting, okay? Because the idea here is that if let's say, let's say I put an electron transport chain inhibitor of complex number two, let's say I inhibited that. Well, if I inhibit complex number two, am I going to fully stop the electron transport chain? 
Well, no, you're not because you still have an entryway through complex one as the electrons can be passed through NADH to complex one to coenzyme Q, then coenzyme Q can go to complex three and so on and so forth. So you're still gonna have proton pumping, albeit at a slower rate, but you're still not gonna fully inhibit uh, the electron transport chain. So I'm gonna be specific and say an electron transport chain inhibitor of complexes one plus two, okay? Because now if we inhibit complex one and complex two, what's gonna happen is that we have ac no actual entry or no gateway where we can now physically pass those electrons into the electron transport chain. So you're gonna completely shut down the electron transport chain, okay? So the idea here is that, well, if we uh, put the electron transport chain inhibitor for complexes one and two, what's gonna happen is you're gonna have no uh, E minus transfer, and you're, you're basically not gonna have any electron transport chain, no ETC activity. And because you're not gonna have any electron transport chain activity, you're not gonna have no H plus gradients. And if you're not forming an H plus gradients, you're gonna not have uh, no ATP synthase activity. So the idea here is that, okay, if I add an electron transport chain inhibitor, I'm not gonna have uh, any electron transfer and no electron transport chain activity. And therefore I'm not gonna have any ATP synthase activity. So it shuts everything down. Now let's do the opposite way. Let's say we added an ATP synthase inhibitor. Okay, well, if we, don't if we put in an ATP synthase inhibitor, well, we're gonna have no ATP synthase activity. If we have no ATP synthase activity, what does that mean? Well, well, the, once ATP synthase stops functioning, that means that we're not gonna have anything because ATP synthase dissipates the proton gradient. So if we inhibit it, we're not gonna have anything to dissipate the proton gradient. So we're gonna say no H plus gradient dissipation. Okay, and now because ATP synthase is not working because we added that inhibitor, we're not gonna have the H plus gradient dissipation. Well, remember we said that if there's nothing to dis dissipate that proton gradient, the electron transport chain also halts. Okay, so we're gonna say that, we're gonna say that because there's no H plus gradient dissipation, we're gonna have no ETC function, or it's not, not immediately, but no ETC function after the H plus gradient builds up, okay? So the idea here is that in the first second that you inhibit ATP synthase, you're gonna stop its activity, but it's still gonna be okay for the electron transport chain to some degree to continue to pump protons because um, it hasn't built up that concentra concentration gradient to the point where the delta G becomes unfavorable. But as soon as you keep pumping those protons in the delta G, once the delta G becomes positive, and the concentration gradient becomes too large between the matrix and the IMS, it becomes too costly to continue to pump protons against this concentration gradient. So then the ETH electron transport chain will also uh, halt and it will stop functioning. So the idea here is that if I added the ETC inhibitor or the ATP synthase inhibitor, in both cases, what I'm gonna see is I'm gonna see the halts of both ETC and ATP synthase because remember we said that they're both intimately connected. Now, let me, let me just posit a question over here for you guys. Well, if we, if we added the ATP synthase inhibitor, right? And so let's just say we added an inhibitor of ATP synthase and we, we wanted to continue the function of the electron transport chain. How could we do that? Well, remember, we just talked about this on the idea of the uncoupler, right? We said that if we added an uncoupler to ATP synth, in the case where we added an ATP synthase inhibitor, what we could do then is, let's just look at it like this, okay? So let's just say in the case again of the ATP synthase inhibitor, we're just gonna put in ATP synthase inhibitor. And let me just erase some of this. So again, we're gonna put this ATP synthase inhibitor, oh, one more. We're gonna put this ATP synthase inhibitor right over here and we're gonna halt its activity. Okay, so we added that inhibitor. And again, we said that because there's nothing to dissipate the proton gradient, the electron transport chain also shuts down. 
when the delta G of pumping protons becomes unfavorable. Or I'm just, I'm not going to say that. Or I'm just going to leave it like this. Okay. The ATC will shut down after a while. Okay. Now the idea here is that, well, let's just say we, we put the inhibitor of ATP synthase and the ATC will shut down as a result. But let's just say we added an uncoupler in this case. What would happen in the case where we have that inhibitor already in? Well, remember the ETC, we didn't add an inhibitor for it. We just, we just, it got shut down because this, it, it became too costly to continue to pump protons against the concentration gradient because the, pro, the concentration gradient built up too much. Now, if we put in an uncoupler, remember the uncoupler uncouples the electron transport chain from ATP synthase. So that means what I'm doing is effectively punching, I'm going to be punching holes into this uh, inner membrane. So all of the proton gradient that was built up because ATP synthase wasn't functioning, now that's not going to happen anymore because now you're basically, you have a way to overcome that. All of the protons that built up, they're going to immediately go from the IMS into the matrix and you're going to lose that proton gradient. So now basically by adding the uncoupler, what you're going to do is you're going to basically restart the electron transport chain. And now the electron transport chain can continue to function because now instead of having to hold on for ATP synthase to di dissipate that proton gradient and make it uh, favorable for it to pump the protons, now the uncoupler is basically dissipating that proton gradient um, and it's favorable again to keep, continue to pump protons and the electron transport chain can continue to function. 